Good morning, everyone. My name is Roy Peterson, and it's a joy to be with you this morning and uh, to have the privilege of serving here at American Bible Society. And I, I do hope you feel well served and that uh, you feel our joy of having you here and hosting you and, and serving this, this movement of, of healing that we're watching happen, uh, reflecting our Lord's uh, love uh, for, for the hurting. Uh, last night was, uh, was such an impactful evening. Uh, how many of you were able to see the film last night with us? Uh, wow, well, almost such a, such a large majority of us able to see it. And, and I just celebrate the gift that God has given to Mona to see such a powerful story and capture it on film that we can now share that with others and to think how that film could stimulate and motivate uh, conversations of reconciliation and healing uh, is very inspiring today to be thinking about the tool that we have in our hand. Um, I don't know if uh, Mona's arrived uh, yet, but as you see her today, um, as an artist, I think she would be blessed by your kind words. Uh, she poured herself into that, and you can see the fruit of it. Uh, what, a, what a gift to the body of Christ. So we want to thank her uh, for sharing that gift with all of us. And it's a joy to uh, open up the scriptures with you for just a few moments this morning. I'd like to start with Isaiah uh, 61. I love this passage of scripture. Um, when we think about what we say about ourselves on social media, you know, what we decide to post, the things that we decide to put in a letter or share with others, um, in, in the organizational world, you know, what we decide to put on our website or in our magazine, what stories we choose to tell, we begin to create a brand for ourselves. We become known in the Bible Society for scripture engagement and uh, Bible translation and, and uh, bringing the ministry of scripture to the hurting. So the stories begin to uh, create a brand. Your stories that you tell about yourself, people begin to know you by the stories you choose to share. Um, I love this passage of scripture because you know Jesus stood up in the synagogue and this is the verse he chose to read about himself. And so we get a glimpse into who Jesus is, what the, the verse that he chose to read in his hometown about himself. Um, in fact, would you all read this verse together with me out loud? Let's read it together. The Spirit of the Lord God has taken control of me. The Lord has chosen and sent me to tell the oppressed the good news, to heal the brokenhearted, and to announce freedom for prisoners and captives. And so as we look at those three or four categories, that depending on how you exegete a couple of those, we have the Lord deeply caring about oppressed and the brokenhearted. He deeply caring about prisoners and captives. And to think that he, as part of his brand of who he wants us to understand, his heart for the world, he says he's all about healing the brokenhearted. And so as I think about this ministry of trauma healing and think about what you're doing and what's happening globally, individual by individual, small group, the ministry of the Word of God, creating conversations of reconciliation. I have to think Jesus is very happy that this makes him very glad to see his children living out this healing to the brokenhearted. It's, it's almost like he, he birthed the church to do this, and yet the church struggles with it. And so we, we want to serve the church. We want to be part of that expression of the church, of the hands and feet of Christ. And this week you've been exploring the um, nuances of power. And so just look at the upside down nature of, of power as we see it in the scripture. You're not, you're not having a problem reading it, are you? Um, you just marvel at the way the Lord talks about power. Last night we heard a couple of, of comments about being born into privilege and, and the privileges that we have um, in our birth, in the country that we're born, the family that we're born into, the region, the uh, education and access and opportunities we have. And yet, who had more privileges than our Lord Jesus? Who was born with more access to legions of angels and the power of God himself in him? And yet, Christ 
flips the world's idea of power upside down. If you think about the Beatitudes, he says, happy are those who know they're spiritually poor. Happy are those who mourn or those who are persecuted. And we see it in the Lord Jesus' choices of who he is really the kindest with, who, he's, who he ministers to the most. You know, we don't see him going out of his way to get over to Rome to visit Caesar. We, we don't, we, other than his brief time, I'm, I'm sorry if Mona's here, but he didn't go back to Egypt as an adult to try to reach the Pharaoh. Um, you know, he didn't try to reach uh, the most powerful, although you know he loves them, but he ministered most exclusively to the poor, the hurting, the brokenhearted, the, the infirmed. In fact, he said, these areas of desperation in our lives can end up becoming blessing. Uh, many of you uh, know uh, my story that as a 19-year-old, I came to Christ in prison and that somebody brought me the scriptures and it was through the reading of the word of God that I was led into a relationship with Christ. There were people involved. Uh, God seems to find joy at allowing us to be a part, but it was so powerfully his word that spoke into my broken life, my traumatized broken life, and opened up a chapter of forgiveness and healing that I can be happy for today. Imagine being happy for having been in prison. But the things that lead us to Christ can be the most difficult things in the world. But if they lead us to Christ, what a blessing they turn out to be. Oh, to go through this life and never have a tragedy or, or a, a, a weakness, an infirmity that leads us to Christ and to end our life not knowing him and go into eternity not knowing him, how much better to have had something that caused us to go to our knees and to cry out to him than to go through life content without him. Happy are those that are spiritually poor, who mourn and are persecuted. Happy are those who are imprisoned because it leads us to Christ. So Jesus goes out of his way to focus on the very people that we as a group are gathered here today. And I do believe he's smiling on this group today. He's so thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for what you have given yourself to this ministry of healing to people who've been abused. The world often overlooks the people that we are focusing on. Or think of how Jesus turned his power upside down in this verse, in this passage in Matthew chapter 20. If one of you wants to be great, you must be the servant of the rest. And if one of you wants to be first, you must be the slave of others, like the Son of Man, who did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life to redeem many people. And so we again, we heard this last night in the film that we take our privilege, we take what it is that God has given us, the gifts that we have just been born into, and we take those gifts and we pour them out in service. Day by day, we lay them at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, take what you've given me, and I give it back to you for you to use it for all of your purposes. The king of the universe got down on his hands and feet, on his hands and knees to wash our feet. The king of the universe went to the cross to take what we deserve. We have no, nowhere to look but to him for a better role model of serving and not taking the privilege of position and power and thinking that it's about us when it's all about him. I look at you today and I think about the ministry to the broken hearted, the workshops, the groups that you're forming and how people come. We even heard some voices last night. You could hear the hurt in people's voices last night during the Q&A. Wasn't the Q&A section amazing? How people were just so willing and open to share the woundedness of some of their journeys. And as you minister to them, I see you today as the very hands and feet of Christ living. He's walking through you to touch the people that he wants to touch. And so I thank you for, for serving the way you do for trusting him. I know when you go into that room, you, you know that you have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea the stories that are going to come out from that group. You have no idea what you might be confronted with or dealing with. And yet you're trusting Christ 
the, his power to walk into that place and trust him for the healing that he wants to do. And I honor you for that. I respect you for that. And so my prayer is that this community of practice strengthens you and encourages you and facilitates even more trauma healing around the world because you've been here today. That your organization, your position of influence, the people that you can speak into their lives, that, that this might stimulate even more and more growing movement of trauma healing, scripture-based trauma healing. In 2 Corinthians 12, Paul writes, my grace is all you need. So when you go into a trauma healing session and you're sitting there with 20 people with, with woundedness and brokenness and trauma and, and having experienced terror and the things that, that you know uh, are sitting in that room, my grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weakness in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And so our needs are overwhelming. We got a vision last night of what could happen in this country if we had more conversations around the trauma of our 400 year history and around reconciliation, racial, racial reconciliation in our country. We got a vision last night of what could be possible and it's tempting to think, well, who are we? How could we do that? It's tempting to think of our own inadequacies that we could never take that on. And yet this verse of scripture says, wait a second, don't look at your resources, don't look at your weakness, look at what we can do through Christ's strength. After all, God has called us to serve those who are weak and those who are hurting. And my power, he says, is greatest when you are weak. And so if you do feel weak today, I'd like you to take heart in the promises of God and his word. I'd like you to believe this passage. Once again, I know you've believed it in the past. Just believe it again if you're feeling weak today. If you're discouraged in any way, I pray that the word of God would encourage your heart that he can and will continue to use you in the days and weeks and months and years ahead. And through his perfect power, he will use us to bless those who are weak. And so we, we walk in this journey in complete dependence on him. We know that in and of ourselves, this is so much bigger than anything we could do. But what joy to trust him day by day and watch him take the ministry of his word and watch it change people's lives right before our eyes. We watch it happen, that people's forgiveness and reconciliation and a lightness and a joy begins to come into their lives as they trust in him. Let me pray. Would you please pray with me? Father, thank you for the wisdom that you're turning up to upside down, the wisdom of this world that you turn upside down. Thank you that we have your wisdom, your word, and your worldview of how we can see things through the lens of the word of God. We thank you for the Lord Jesus, our King and our Savior, who poured out his life for us. And today we ask you once again, Lord, to fill us with your power, that we might love as you love, that we might bring healing to a world that is broken and tired. We ask this in the powerful, strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.